You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Mori and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. Welcome back in for the Orange Power Podcast, and we turn our attention for the first time this season on women's softball. Talking to Kenny Gajewski, the head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowgirls. Coach, a pleasure to have you with us on the on the new podcast setup. It's amazing. I, I don't know um, what to think of this yet, but I kind of <laughs> like it. I kind of like the fact that we're in a podcast uh, format here. They're kind of cool, and I think people can listen to these at any point, any spot. Mm-hmm. I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving and when we're traveling on a bus, and and uh, uh, maybe this will take off and be a big hit for a lot of our fans. And so if you are out there and you want to, uh, you know, let other people know, hey, I, I heard Kenny talking about podcasts and how cool they are. So let your friends know how to how to find this podcast and let your friends know we're talking softball. And so this is the first one. So let's kind of zoom in to, you know, from the beginning to where we are right now. Um, let's start with the fact that uh, Miranda Ellish was a transfer from Oregon to Texas, now to Oklahoma State kind of a late transfer. I know we've played a lot of games, and for most people, they know this story and what's going on. But talk about how that kind of developed and how, how you were able to get her here to Oklahoma State. Well, it's a, it's a fun story. Um, you know, she's obviously a, a decorated player um, that people just know from the outside. And um, <clears throat> I just had a contact um, that knew her. Um, and when she was deciding to um, come back and play and got on the portal, um, I just reached out to that mutual person and just said, hey, tell me what's going on. And that person said, hey, you're at the top of her list. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> um, and I said, how come? And um, that person just said, hey, like she likes what's happened there. She likes the freedom that people have there. They can be the, themselves. And... and um, um, and if you're interested, then, uh, then I'll let, I'll let her know. And I'm like, well, let her know. I mean, we're, we're super interested. So, um, once that started, I just took the opportunity to get to know her. <clears throat> and one of the things that we do a lot as in that process, and it's a fast process, because if you wait too long, you're, you're going to be too late. Um, so I just got to know her and I just kind of lay it all out there. First, one of the first things that we always ask is what happens if you're beat out here? what kind of teammate are you, are you going to be? And that answer tells me wh- whether I want to keep going on and on. And I've had some answers that told me I need to go the, the other way. But the majority of the, the time we get the answer of, I'll be the best teammate I can be. I just want to be in a program where I'm happy, where I'm being coached, um, where the teammates love me. And, um, and so once I get that, I always tell them, you understand this, like, as long as you do everything the way you're capable of, you're an everyday kid here. There's no way that you're not, but you got to do that, and you got to be all in from, from day one, and you got to understand it's going to be really hard. And so she did that, and, um, you know, and that's the start of that. It's been fun to watch her grow and grow back into who she was, especially not just with her talent in the circle, but that personality, right, that, that emotion is slowly coming back and the fist pumps and all of those sorts of things. I want to talk about a couple other newcomers. Coach, on the right side of uh, your offense, and again, first base has kind of been, uh, you know, a revolving door. But Morgan Wynn, you talked about her when she came in. Um, okay, she's a good softball player. She's an all-American kid. I mean, I, there's so much about this kid uh, to like. And then Bree, the freshman uh, at second base, has been really, really good. So, again, different roster for those who haven't necessarily caught up with everything right now. The right side looks a little bit different. And um, they've been a couple of fun kids to, to get to know as well. Yeah, we've got, <clears throat> we've got some great kids. I mean, we have a, we have a program full of great people. Um, and uh, Bree's just been everything you could want, uh, hitting in the leadoff spot, almost hitting it around 400, getting on base almost at 500, um, driving in runs. I think she's got eight or nine RBIs, which is a lot for a kid that you wouldn't, you look at her and you think, ah, oh, she, she's a bunter, mm. slapper. Well, she's hit two big home runs, big home runs, like deep home runs. Um, so this is a kid who's really talented. Um, she's an amazing, amazing, amazing kid. It is off the charts what she's like. Um, and you just have to get to know her to find that stuff out. I don't want to overdo that. I want people to, to really dive into uh, Brie. But she does things. She's the ultimate 
example of doing things when nobody's watching. And I'm not just talking about softball. And so the stories that we're going to tell about her over her four year, years here are going to be legendary. Um, she's a generational type player. And I'm not just talking about on our field. Wow. And that's really cool. And so um, to have her there is great. Morgan has been um, struggling um, on the field, not off our field, but on our field. And it's okay, too, because she's going to come out of it. And when she does, you better watch out because that train is going to roll. <laughs> so so let's talk about a couple other things before we talk about uh, what's coming up this weekend. You know, you and I have had a lot of conversations about uh, the teams that you play on your schedule, how deliberate you are. Right now, uh, as we sit here in late March, the number one RPI conference is the Big 12. You know, and you've said in the past, you know, as a conference, we've got everybody's got to play teams. You got to play good teams. Um, you got to win those games, right? Obviously, but we need this conference to move up. Right now, it's number three, but the strength of schedule out of the Big 12 is number one in the country, and I think you're number three overall as an individual program. That's a really good sign for this conference. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the one thing that I, that I learned at Florida was you had to play a good schedule. And um, you can't run from the schedule. It doesn't matter how good your conference is, you need to go play a good schedule if you want to be there at the very end. And so um, we've done that. Um, and um, I've always uh, taken that approach that that's how Team One got in. Because we finished just three games over five, or one game over 500, um, and then we finished, I think, three games over as the the season ended. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really an amazing deal. So um, we just that's the approach. We we played as tough as we've ever played this year. It's been hard, um, but. Um, you know, I like it. It's the way it is. We're not going to run from that. We're going to continue to play great teams. It's great for our fans. They love when we play teams that they recognize and all that, and, and we're going to continue that. Well, and at 21 and 6, obviously, and I think it's either 8, 9, 10 teams either receiving votes or been in or roughly were in when you guys played them in the top 25. I mean, obviously, that's – you know, 40% of your schedule has been versus the top 25, some really highly ranked teams. 21 and 6. Give me the give me the State of the Union address for, for the fans, again, just trying to figure out where you guys are right now for this team at this point. Well, I think we're in a really good spot. I mean, you know, we're going into the what I like to call the second season right now, which is conference play. We've had the preseason. I mean, obviously it's, I call it pre, but all those games count. And... Um, you know, this team is not exactly where we'd want to be, like, I, but I don't want them exactly where we want to be right now. I mean, so I want to make sure that I'm clear on that. Like, I'm not disappointed. Um, I think we're right where we want to be. But it's weird because even though I feel like we're in a good spot, it, there's a part of me that's got a sense of urgency to get better every day. I, mean, I just want them to understand, like, when you come into our office, like, and you come into the field, like, like it's, it's time to get to work. We're going to have a blast. We're going to have fun. We do that. You know that. You've been around. Um, but I, it's, it is work. And everything you're doing is preparing you for the moment, whatever your moment is. And um, all of them are going to have a different moment during the course of the season. And are you ready for the moment? That's all I want. Well, it, it, and again, going back to the beginning, kind of the philosophy side of things, um, you know, you said early on, and I even had sent you a text, and you said, yeah, I, kinda, I was kind of thinking that way, too. And that is, okay, we're in the top five, top six in here, and um, we're the hunted. And then you, you felt like your kids kind of played like the hunted, and you went, whoa, 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 I got this all wrong. Yeah. We're not the hunted. We haven't done anything yet. We have not won a championship. Until we do that, we're not truly the hunt. Now, that doesn't mean teams aren't going to look at your number and go, okay, we got to play really good against Oklahoma State, and they're going to give you your best shot because right. they are. But, but at the same time, you, you flipped the mentality pretty quick in this season. We had to. And I recognized that about our second weekend um, in, in Clearwater. And I had been subscribing to the fact that we were um, – we had this big bullseye on our back. We probably have some sort of that for a lot of teams. Sure. But not the teams that I, I want to beat, that we talk about that we want to beat. If you want to beat Oklahoma – you're, you're not the hunted. The bullseye's on their back. And that's who I'm focused on. I'm focused on them and Florida State and Alabama's and 
Um, Virginia Tech is having a great year, and, and Texas, and, and all these schools, everybody in our, co- our conference, I'm, I'm, I'm after all of them. And, and I'm looking at them like they're, they're my food. Like if I don't get them, I, 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 I don't eat, right? And, and that's the mentality that you have to take when you're on that field because that's the mentality that those top programs have. And none of them, or we don't have, like my main point to our kids was, we don't have anything that they want. Well, we have cool uniforms, <laughs> but like I, that's not what they're playing for, right? Like we're playing for the trophy at the end. Um, and we're playing for, for the moments and experiences you get to have with your teammates. So don't lose sight of that and, and, and understand we're, we're chasing and we have to go take it. Well, and when you look at the, this team this season and, and where you have been able to get the team to this point, I thought it was kind of interesting, too, because I think there was at one point going in maybe a little bit of a, a frustration that, hey, we're not – because this team came in build rightly or wrongly, as probably the most talented team ever, certainly under your rock, maybe ever, in Oklahoma State Cowgirl history. Um, and therefore, when you're that talented, well, you're not going to have some of the road bumps that you had last year or the year before or the year before. And then all of a sudden you go, well, no, wait a minute. If we go back to the first time we went to the Women's College World Series, we had a lot of these same issues because that's called growing things. It's what teams do. This team's going to do the same thing. What, was there a moment where you went, well, I, I don't know that I thought we were going to have that particular problem again this year? I think so. We had a, we had a, I'm not a big team talk guy. Like, I hate them because I think the kids <laughs> think there's something wrong. So, I, you know, I think there's a lot of coaches out there that one little thing goes wrong. All right, we're going to have a team meet meeting. Meet, meet here at this time. Ike. Seriously, like these kids do not want to meet one more more time, but we needed to have one and we needed to have some clarity on things. And so we just had a little talk and, and you know, Coach John, uh, our pitching coach, John, it, he spoke up in that and, um, and it was really cool. He, he, he kind of just re- reminded our kids, he said, hey, you'll never play for a more positive coach than Coach G. Like just period. I've been around a lot of people. I've been around a lot of teams. I've been a head coach. There is not a more positive guy that you're ever going to have. Don't forget that. Second thing, something that he did that may, ha- may be having a little effect on you is he was talking about you guys like, this is World Series or bust. This is, this is a, we don't win the final game. It'll be a disappointment. And when I heard him say that, I was like, dang it. Like, but I'm glad he said that because I'm coachable and I can go, you know, next year, because we're going to be really talented again, I'm going to make sure that I massage that a little bit more and explain why I'm telling them. Because these girls, when you explain to them and when your messaging is really clear, it is wow. And so all of us have to be better at the messaging. So I wear a little bit of that. And now I just go backwards and go, okay, let's reframe that for these kids. Um, and let why, why did I say that? Why do I feel like that? And when they start to hear those things, sometimes I just assume that they already know. And these kids are smart and talented, but they're fragile just like everybody else. And so once you, I just had to go back and reframe that. And, and maybe we'll be better at it next year, but we're right in the middle of it now, so I'll evaluate that in me at the end like I always do <laughs> and get better at that. But that was a note, a note I took from a very wise man and a very good coach and said, ah, that was an area I need to go back and re, 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 reframe, and I think it's helped our kids. You know, I, I had a coach one tell, time tell me that, you know, what I have to do is I have to cast the vision. I've got kids that are, can do whatever they need to do, but I have to cast the vision so they can see the picture. And once I do that, they go, oh, oh that's what you want me to do. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. I never yeah. knew you want. That's what you wanted. So it kind of se- seems like yeah. almost the same thing yeah. right there. Well, we just assume. I mean, we assume we get so busy and so caught up in the little things that are going on, we forget about the biggest picture of, of, of them all. Um, you know, we have a saying here that this is not my program. It's your program. It's the kids who pl- play here. I'm just a placeholder. I want to be a great placeholder, but it, I don't own this program. These kids own this program. Um, they own it because they're the ones that put the blood, sweat, and tears. They're the ones that their parents are investing money for them to be here. Um, I'm getting paid to, to be here. And, um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a, 
it, I mean, it, it, it's a luxury to me. And I don't want to lose that. Um, I love it. I love what I do. So I just have to, to, to be the best version of, of me as well. Like I asked them, be the best version of you every day. And um, I got to do the same thing. You can't, you can't talk and not do. You have to do and talk and example and all, all that, that stuff. And when you do that, it's powerful. Before we talk about the next opponent and get people truly caught up to where you are right now, let's talk a little bit about the field. Uh, you know, uh, obviously it's, uh, you know, there, there's a big vision there too, big picture long term. But uh, coming into the season, I know you're extremely excited about the investment in not only a new scoreboard, but in some amenity upgrades. That field, uh, which has already been more playable than, than it certainly would have been right. a year ago. So um, I know you were excited, and, and may, you said to me once upon a time, It'll be the best branded field on campus. I, I think you're. I think you're accurate. You can't go very far without seeing OSU or Cowgirls somewhere. It's beautiful. Um, it's uh, it's really changed the look of our place, and that's been really cool. Um, the branding is off the charts. Jesse Martin and his crew did an amazing job of um, of doing that. We spent a lot of time to make that right. Um, the field is beautiful. It's playing great, um, and um, it, you know, looking at that wall, and and hopefully we have this new deck up by this weekend. That'll be a huge deal. More about 200 more, more seats. Um, we've had two crowds now, over a thousand, um, for teams that they don't get crazy excited about playing, um, or teams that are may, may, maybe fans don't get crazy excited. You know, excited about is what I meant to say. Um, so it's really, it's really cool, and um, I, I'm, I'm grateful, but I'm not going to lie. I, I went to the baseball game on, on Sunday, and I caught myself sitting in there dreaming about what it's going to be like to have a place like that that's fresh and up-to-date and um, that new feel. I, I, so I'm not going to lie to you about that. <laughs> that's, that's the vision. Sure. Um, I'm thankful for what we've got, um, and, and I'm thankful that we have – a place to go to work each day that our kids can get better at. Um, but, um, but I want what, what th those guys have for our kids and, and, um, and we're working towards that. And I'm, I'm anxious. I can't wait. And I want to do everything I can to make it happen for those kids. And, um, it's cool. It's cool to see what's possible out there. And if you don't dream, you'll never, you'll never do what you want to do. And coach Holder said, if you're, if you're not dreaming so big that people laugh at you, you're wasting your time. You know, and, and we've seen the fans and what a difference they've made. It's been incredible. And so this fan base has seen you guys win 10 of 11. They saw you win four straight this last weekend, probably as sharp as you guys have been. So let's move to the second season, and that is conference season. You open up with Texas Tech coming up here this weekend, and uh, that's a much improved team. And, you know, going back to the strength of schedule for the, this conference and the RPI, it's a team that's played a, a good schedule so far. Yeah, you know, I went through their stuff last night for the first time, really, like, dug in and they played some some good teams tough you know what I mean and and um so I anticipate they'll do the same thing uh their pitching's improved um their offense um is not like this real big powerful offense like we sometimes run into but they do a lot of short game stuff so they force you to play catch they put the ball in play um so um we're gonna have to play well. I mean, I, I, I you know, just because they're in the infancy of their um, coach's tenure doesn't mean that, that we can just think we can just roll out and just go beat Texas Tech. It's not the way it is. Um, we're gonna need our fans to be um, the crazy, loud, pitch to pitch mentality that they've had in our outfield and in our stands. We need to pack the house. The weather is gonna be awesome. Uh, our kids need to feed off that and be the best version of themselves. We need to play Cowgirls softball. And if we do that, we'll be okay. Conference season opens up. Before we let you go, you again, you have had, you and I have had a lot of conversations about the significance of the fans um, and how important they are to you and how much your kids love them. We could see that. I mean, it's, it's so obvious. But there's a message that we got to get out there because I know you're, you're exactly right when you say people here sold out and go, oh, man, I was going to maybe go to the game. Yeah. Well, sold out is, yes, there may not be a chair back, but that does not mean they cannot get into these games. Yeah, I appreciate you. You've been a big help with me on this um, and all the stuff that we do. And, and um, 
the message we keep hearing, and it's and it's easy, and we're we're in the process of of kind of reframing that for our fans too, like mm -hmm. we reframe for our kids. The message is we don't have chairbacks available for you to buy a season seat; they're sold out. Um, however, um, when a team like Texas Tech co comes in, they have a pass list that the Big 12 mandates that we have to give them. And when they don't use their seats, then we're able to resell those, okay? So they get sold. Uh, when we don't use ours always, some, sometimes our girls don't use all, all of theirs, they go for sale. Um, we have season ticket holders, <clears throat> and I urge them um, to turn them back in if you're not going, because we can give them to people that really want to come. Um, especially in those black chairbacks. We have a lot of um, donors and fans that buy seats but don't ever come. Um, and I need those back to be able to redistribute to make sure that we have people in the stands. Um, and that's an important, important message that we've got to get out here. The last one is that we have a ton of standing room. And we generally keep selling it. Um, and it's very <laughs> inexpensive. And we've poured a lot of concrete um, down the right field line to be able to have a really nice view. If you get there early enough, you can have a view where you can rest your arms on the um, on the on the pad up, up top and have your drink up there and chill out and watch. And kids can run around and Alley P's right there behind us, and and you can run around all over the, the uh, place. So we've got areas. So please come. Do not get turned away. Do not get turned away because or turned off because you hear it's sold out. They're all sold out. Just show up, make it as hard on our administration as you can to say, what do we got to do? And, and I mean that in the, in the nicest way. Like I'm, they, they know that, but the more that our people keep lining up and having lines at the bathrooms, it forces our hand and we know that and, 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 and that's what it takes at times. And so I'm grateful to all of you that are listening that, that do that but drag your friends here. Let's make this place the absolute worst place to play if you're <laughs> an opponent. Love it. Friday at 6 o'clock, Saturday at uh, 2, and Sunday noon, first pitch at Cowgirl Stadium. Coach, appreciate you getting this caught up. And we won't always go this long each week, but just wanted to kind of give fans a chance to really absorb what has gone on to this point and uh, looking forward to the second season. I appreciate it. And I was just sitting here just thinking about, like, maybe you and I should start a podcast. <laughs> I was just – I was curious if you had an idea of what we could talk through. I have a – listen, we could talk – you could throw out a lot of topics and you and I could fill the time. <laughs> that I'm pretty sure about. We have no sure. problem there. Coach, appreciate it. Good luck on uh, – good luck this weekend. All right, thank you. All right. With that, uh, we are going to say thank you for listening and watching on the Orange Power. Our podcast. We'll catch you right back here next week. Hello, sweet babies. Welcome to your new home. You have changed our life, and you may even change the world. And because of you, 2021 is the best year ever. Mercy has helped moms deliver babies for nearly 200 years. To find out how to welcome your baby at Mercy, visit mercy.net slash OSU mom. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, bikes for the whole family are just a click away. Buy online at academy.com with our free in-store assembly. Your next set of wheels plus helmets, pads, and water bottles will be waiting for you at our in-store pickup counter. Get to the fun faster with our in-store pickup and free assembly at Academy Sports and Outdoors. At og and the energy we deliver is more than electrical. We energize the future by balancing our efforts to provide the lowest rates possible with our responsibility to protect the environment for future generations. That's why we've strengthened our power grid through new technologies, leading to a 40% reduction in CO2 emissions, which, when combined with our rates, makes us an industry leader. Because at og and we do more than energize a power grid. At og and we energize life.
Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge.